Hey guys, it's Rush. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to the channel. This video today, we're looking at the 8BitDo 6 button controller. I only found out about this pad from your comments on the Sega Saturn Pro Controller video. The reason this pad is very special is because the original 8BitDo that I reviewed on the channel was only an 8 button pad, so it had 6 face buttons and 2 shoulder buttons. This model specifically has 10 buttons. It has 6 on the face, it has 4 on the top, and they can be mapped independently. That's very, very significant. It's really good. The Sega Saturn Pro Controller, which I reviewed recently, this pad, whilst I really do like it, the only drawback for me personally is the fact that these buttons cannot be mapped independently. There is some overlap between some of the buttons and the face button, so it is really an A button pad. So that is where the new M30 pad comes in. It is a wired controller, and as mentioned, it's a 10 button control pad. It has six buttons on the face, which is a layer I prefer, and it has four dedicated shoulder buttons. So the M30 comes packaged with a manual. It comes with a USB Type-C lead. I measured it and it's around two and a half meters long, and you do get a one month Game Pass for Xbox Ultimate. So this pad is an Xbox licensed controller, so it's compatible out of the box with Xbox Series X, Series S, Xbox One, and Windows 10 slash 11. With a Brook Converter, I suspect it will be usable on a PS5, but I don't have a Brook Converter with me to do that test. So here is the M30 side by side with the Sega Saturn Pro Controller. I put these two pads together because I wanted to highlight the size difference. The only drawback I see with this controller is the size. The M30 is tiny, it's really small. It's not a deal breaker, it's not a problem, but it is a significant point. The D-pad is very similar on the M30 to the Sega Saturn pad. It's slightly bigger, but it's a very similar shape, very similar style. It has more of a matte finish in comparison to the Sega Saturn pad. But this is why I like this pad. It's a circular D-pad. It's a Sega Saturn style D-pad. So look at the M30 in more detail. It's a really nice feeling pad in terms of the quality. It's better quality than the RetroBit Sega Saturn pad. The plastics feel higher quality. It's got more of a matte finish. The D-pad itself as well has a matte finish. No wobble to it, it's very sturdy, that feels really good. The buttons are very similar to the Sega Saturn Pro Controller. Doesn't have that soft feel that I mentioned for the Sega Saturn pad. But again, it's very sharp, very responsive. You can clearly feel when you press the button and release the button. Same goes for the shoulders as well. Has a nice feel, a nice click to it. D-pad also feels really good. Feels lovely in the hand. But pay close attention to the positioning. If I grab this pad as I normally would, you can see that my thumb sort of fits over the D-pad. It doesn't sit on top, it's a bit higher up. So I have to shuffle my hands down for a better position. So on the back of the pad, there's two toggles. The toggle on the left is where you can configure what the inputs, the directional inputs control in terms of the game. So you can toggle between left stick and D-pad. doesn't make much of a difference in fighting games, but you have got that toggle if the game uses a combination of left stick and D-pad. On the right hand side, this is the most important option. You have a toggle to configure the button layout. Now I've got it set to LSB, RSB, LB and LT. And what that does is that enables me to use the top button. So RSB, LSB, that basically is I think left stick button, right stick button, and then you've got your LB and your LT. Your R buttons are then here. This is the configuration that gives you the 10 buttons. I'm now in Street Fighter 6 and I'll run through the button config. So how I would configure this pad in Street Fighter 6, I punch this again at the top, light, medium, heavy, my kicks at the bottom, light, medium, heavy kick. My driving pad button, heavy punch, heavy kick. I'm going to map heavy punch, heavy kick to this button there. It's already done, but I'll just show you as an example. So my drive impact is now mapped here. It's independent, doesn't overlap with anything else at all. So you can map a specific mechanic depending on the game you play to these two individual buttons. Three punches, my LB, and three kicks is my LT. So this is the most optimal layout for me in Street Fighter 6. I've accessed all my buttons on the right hand side and I've access to mechanics on the left hand side. But I love the fact that I can have my favorite layout and additionally have the 
driving that button, a mechanic button on this side as well. The B-top C3, you couldn't do that. This was perfect on the B-top. I had my three punches, three kicks mapped here, but I could not map a button here for drive impact i could do that on the old hori fighting commander you can probably do it on the hori octa haven't got that to hand now but this is the optimal layout for me to play street fighter so the next question is how does the pad feel how do the buttons feel most importantly how does the d-pad feel in short it feels great the d-pad is very responsive it feels very accurate i can feel where my thumb is at all moments tougher combos i can get with relative ease it's no problem at all to get combos, to get my inputs. I can feel where I am at every moment. I can feel if I'm going to make a mistake. It's very similar to the Sega Saturn Pro Controller. These D-pads, in my opinion, are the best ones. I I love the old Horrifying Commander. The D-pad I was used to, but it wasn't anywhere near as good as these circular D-pads, in my opinion. It really is effortless. It feels it's really nice, really good, very accurate. I have no complaints with the D-pad at all. So to summarize, a great controller, lots of functionality, very well built, actually cheaper than the Sega Saturn Pro controller. Admittedly, that is a wireless pad, but that was around 50, I think it was 45 pounds. This was just shy of 30 pounds. So a pretty big price difference. Buttons feel great, D-pad's amazing, much like the Sega Saturn Pro Controller. I have 10 mappable buttons, and it's wired as well, so I can't fault this pad at all. The only downside, as mentioned, is the size. For me, it won't be an issue, I'll get used to it. I'm more happy, given the fact I've got my optimal button layout for Street Fighter VI. But the size and feel of the pad may be an issue for some, so be wary of that if you are thinking about buying this control pad. This is the pad I'll be using moving forwards and I'm super excited to be using it in Street Fighter 6. Any questions and any queries, as always, give me a shout and I will catch you in the next one. Take care.